Okay, I just wanted to go through and answer uh, a few typical questions that I, I receive um, meshing with pointwise, uh, specifically the difference between groups and layers and uh, when to use one or the other, um, transformations, okay, scalings and stretching transformations, as well as some scripting related questions like when to journal um, and how to actually get started writing a script, okay. So, as you can see in the display window, I just have a very simple cube. Okay, we'll just start off very simple uh, with this example. And I'm going to first start talking about uh, groups and layers. All right, so a layer in pointwise, which can be seen in the, the layer panel on the left, layers are very similar to layers in, in other tools, like for example, Photoshop or something. It, it really allows you to adjust the visibility of specific entities that live in the display window. Okay, You can imagine that something more complex than the cube, uh, you could have a lot of entities living in the display at the same time. And we've got a lot of different selection tools, but maybe you want to adjust the visibility. Okay, And that's kind of what layers allows you to do. It allows you to adjust the visibility of specific entities by placing them in different layers. An entity can only exist in a single layer. Okay, There's a, an exception to that and I'll explain that in just a moment. But uh, why don't we just get started creating a layer and uh, demonstrating how it works. So um, like I said this is a cube so there's six domains and there's, there's one block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that block and I'm going to just put it in uh, a layer, layer number one. So I'm going to come down here to where it says assign layer and assign that to layer number one. Okay, and I can name that layer, I can give it a description, just call it like block. Okay, and then I'm going to grab the uh, domains mask. Okay, so I've created that layer and I'm going to grab the domains mask and I'm going to take the top domain and I'm going to put it in layer number two. And I'll just call that top. You can see that domain has actually disappeared. We are by default in layer number one. I'm going to take this side domain and put it in layer number three. And I'm going to take this uh, side domain. Um, let's see. Take this side domain and I'm going to put it in layer number four. Okay. So I can call these side if I want. Um, but now the interesting thing is you can see in layer number zero we have 15 entities and those domains have disappeared, right? They're no longer in layer number zero, okay? But if I go to say layer number two, there's that top domain, right? Layer number three, there's the, the side domain. Um, and see, so the, the interesting thing though about this is that um, you can see the connectors exist with that, right? Because the domain can't exist without its bounding connectors. Okay, so that's why I said that um, an entity can exist in one layer at a time, but when you have entities like this, like a domain that has some support entities, those have to come with it in order for that entity to exist. Okay, a good example is layer number one with the block. All those domains and connectors must exist in order for the block to exist. Okay. All right, so now what if I wanted to operate on stuff, okay, like the top domain. I, I would isolate that domain, but just by double clicking on it, I can isolate it. I can begin operating on it. Um, this little arrow here, this little chevron, basically indicates that this is the current working layer. So any, any entities that I create will go into that layer, okay. So another interesting thing is, is if I turn on multiple layers, you can see that little uh, chevron is it's still on layer number two, indicating that that is the current working layer, even though I have multiple layers active at the same time. Now say these three layers, I want them on um, all the time. I don't want to have to keep clicking their checkboxes to make them all on. What I can do is I can actually create a layer set. So if I come down here and create a layer set, I'm going to save that. Okay. And so now what I can do is if I come up here and isolate layer number zero, instead of coming down here and clicking on two, three, four, like that, what I can do is I can come down to the layer set, I can click on it and click restore. And it'll automatically turn on those three layers and make number two the current working layer. So you can save these kind of layer states, okay? So that's pretty nice, and that's that's uh, kind of a brief overview of how layers work in Pointwise. Okay, now groups. Groups are a little bit different, and I'm going to just turn on everything, so we have all of our entities on. 
All right. Like I said, multiple entities can live in the display window at a given time, um, different entity types. And that's kind of what the select mask is for, the selection mask. Is it allows you to do very targeted selection. You can pick only blocks, only domains, only connectors, etc. Okay, And you can manipulate the display, the scene, to actually select those entities in the display window itself. Okay, But what if you wanted to operate on the same entities over and over again? So for example, I want to change the dimension of these four connectors running in a streamwise direction in the Z direction over and over again. Okay, um, Maybe I'm going to do some transformations to this box and I don't want to have to keep selecting these connectors over and over to change their dimension. That's when I would go and create a group. Okay, So to create a group you would pick your entities, you would go to create group. Okay, In this case I'm creating a group of connectors. I'm going to give it a name give it like cons or something very original and uh, do a drop down in the group menu and you can see we have a group called cons it's of type connector and there's four connectors in there okay so how do I pick that group you have to have the connectors mask on as well as the groups mask so with both of those active you can pick that group it'll automatically select those four connectors and then you can do something like change their dimension okay you can make it finer you can make it coarser um, etc. All right, and you can do this with all the different entity types. You know, domains, uh, connectors, blocks, database entities, um, and 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 do things like that. So here's another example. Let's just pick these three domains. Okay, and let's create a group called DOMS. All right, now. I could change their so I can just pick that group. I can change all their solver attributes so they're the same. I could adjust their color. Um, so maybe I'm changing their display attributes uh, quite a bit, and so it's nice to just group them. So I can just quickly change their color, and then I know that okay, all three of those faces are yellow, and and that sort of thing. So again, the idea with groups is to do selection. Okay, it's supposed to aid in in selection. All right. So how do you get rid of a group? Well, you don't just click it and hit delete because that'll actually delete the entities. Because again, you've you've created that group to do a selection. So when you pick that group, it actually selects those entities. Um, so you don't want to just delete it. Uh, what you need to do is you click that group and you go edit ungroup, and that'll actually get rid of that group without deleting the entities. Okay, so that's groups and layers. Now let's talk about transformations. Okay, so I have a cube. What I want to do is I want to extend this in the Z direction. I want to make it longer. All right. So how can I go about doing that? Well, I'm going to pick the block. You could pick domains, connectors, database entities, or blocks, really kind of any entity and, and uh, adjust its shape, size and shape. Um, but I'm going to pick the block, and I'm going to go to Edit, Transform. So here are all the different transformations we support. Okay, Translations. Obviously, moving the the entity from one location to another, scaling operations, um, stretching, okay, pulling them, rotating them, or mirroring them, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by doing a stretch operation, okay, because that makes the most sense, right? We want to stretch this in the z direction. So I'm going to click stretch. And it tells me this is what it's looking for. Okay, this is the stretch summary. We actually need to give it an anchor point. An anchor point is a, a point on the object that's not going to move. It's where you're going to fix it. We need to give it a begin point and an end point. That begin point and end point are actually going to define the stretch vector. All right, and from that stretch vector that we define, the factor and direction are going to be auto-populated. Okay, defined by that stretch vector. So. My anchor, I'm going to stretch it in the positive z direction, so I'm going to just place my anchor back here at this corner point. And now it's asking me for my begin point and then my end point. So I can go and pick those in the display window, Okay, just pick two points. Um, you could pick two points that are relatively aligned with the axis, or you could just type them in. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and they don't actually even have to be on the body. You're just picking two points that define the vector for the transformation. So I'm going to just pick point zero 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 as my first point, and then I'm going to pick point 0.005 to define my second point, and that is going to define my stretch vector. Okay, So from those two points, the begin point and end point, we can see that we've stretched at a factor of 2 in the z direction, Okay, which is what I wanted to do. So you can see now we've stretched this box. And then we still have that uh, connector group. 
so i can come grab that connector group and i can adjust those the number of points on those connectors right to to make it finer in that streamwise direction okay so rather than do a stretch operation let's try a different transformation let's go edit transform let's do a scale scale is actually easier okay and in, in my opinion for this type of operation that we're doing because we're actually going to stretch it in a constant z direction or in the z direction so scale let's just scale it in the z direction and hold the other directions constant okay so it's expecting the same uh, same inputs okay it's expecting an anchor point so we're going to pick the corner here that's my anchor it's asking for a begin point and an end point okay so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to enter my scale factors. Okay, rather than pick a begin point and end point and have it define my scale, I'm actually going to just tell it my scale factors. I want one in the x, one in the y. That means no scaling in the y. Just leave it constant. Okay, no scaling in the x or y direction, but a factor of two in the z direction. And there you go. Okay, and we, so we've essentially stretched it in the z direction. All right, so those are some different transformations for adjusting this, this block if you wanted to change its shape. So now let's talk a little bit about uh, some scripting because you can definitely script some of the stuff that we've done, especially if you're doing it over and over again. So one thing that's really tempting is from the script menu, you can actually begin journaling, okay? And that's fine. Um, I should mention this is where you actually execute a script is from the script menu. Journaling is fine. Um, basically what journaling does is, you know, maybe I should start off by saying PointWise runs in two threads. There's the GUI and the core and they communicate through this scripting layer. So everything you can do in PointWise, you can do through our scripting language. Okay, so every action in PointWise has an associated uh, glyph command. Glyph is our scripting language. So when you journal, it basically takes all of that, it captures it, and it sends it to a file, which is perfectly fine. The thing is, is we don't really recommend running those files. While you can, you can replay them, okay, but you need to make sure that you're starting from the exact same point that you started the journal from. Because if you change anything and you try replaying it, it could break because variable names have changed, etc. Okay, you're not starting from the same point you were before. All right, so we really recommend journaling for capturing commands for debugging purposes, for learning a little bit about the different glyph commands that are used to create and manipulate entities in pointwise. Um, and because of that, we've actually added another feature a little while ago that allows you to take those commands and send them to the message window. So this is the way that I prefer to write scripts to learn about scripting and the various commands in pointwise is you can right click in the message window go to preferences turn on journaling and I'm just gonna create a two-point connector maybe you're interested in in uh, writing a procedure in, in uh, glyph to create a two-point connector so you create a two-point connector in the GUI and you can see that here are the commands that are required to create that two-point connector in the user interface okay so I'll tell you right now that glyph is pretty verbose okay as you can see when it's when it's echoing when it's piping this information to the message window. It's pretty verbose. verbose. There's a lot of temp variables being set. If you were to write this by hand, you could extract out just what you needed um, from this uh, set of commands. So here you can see the, the classes and the methods that are being used to create that connector object. And then you could take this information and then start writing your own procedure uh, to create a two-point connector from scratch. And then it would be a little bit more robust. You could add your own error checking and everything. Okay. That's the other thing is when if you journal and you try running those things and they fail, there's no error checking. Okay, um, we don't just put error checking in there for you automatically. That's the sort of thing that when you write a script by hand, you would add that uh, yourself. Okay, so this is one of the ways you can learn a little bit about scripting, um, figure out the commands that are being used for specific operations, and then begin writing your own script. All right, so I hope that helps. Again, just answering a few questions that I typically get um, uh, related to uh, pointwise and some of the meshing and uh, transformation options. So thank you all very much.